Thanks so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this message brought to you by Friday Night Light Ministries. For more information, check us out on the web at FridayNightLight.us. So, on the first Friday of the month, we generally um, just let people share their testimony because we just believe testimonies build faith and it's awesome to give people an opportunity to do that. And I see Dan Kelm out there. It's good to see you. It's about time you've been here on a Friday. Just saying. Calling you out. But we love you. Uh, um, So tonight, Rich Slavacek is going to share his testimony with us for a few minutes. And we're excited about that. And then after that, we'll get back into worship because we just love to praise God. Friday nights are a time to celebrate him and to lift his name up. It's it's all about glorifying his name. So come on up here, Rich. Right, right up there. Right up there. there. What? Come on now. Okay, first of all, I need you guys to help me with a couple of things. Um, Janae's mom is going to be moving back into her house, cleaned up, and so it's praise the Lord. Let's just praise the Lord for that. Yeah. And Amber is in the walk-in clinic with who? With who? Abby. Abby had a fever today. She hasn't, um, yeah. Hmm? The Browns. Uh, so we need prayer for for Abby and for Laura, for their kids or for them? Oh, man. Okay. So, that, Lord, we just ask for healing. Yes. Healing on these families, healing the people that are sick. Father, we know it's part of this world, but it's not part of your world. And so we just call healing down on these, these people, Lord, these friends of ours. Yes. You didn't tell me how much time I have. Yeah, like, I don't know. 15, 20 minutes? Okay. Okay, you've all heard it before right here. We shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So if you need more information about the blood of the Lamb, see me later. But the word of your testimony, we all think of this. I always thought of this, but um, God just downloaded... He does stuff in our lives every day, and that's our testimony. You know, do the people you work with, do they know where you go to church? Do they know you go to church? I mean, can they tell by the way you act that you're a Christian, that you're following Christ? That's your testimony. This is great, too. I mean, this is, I think you're going to like this one. Well, as normal as I seem, my story is not normal. What? <laughs> Come on. Um, salvation, your name written in the book of life, worshiping God in heaven for eternity. That's what we ask. That's what we're trying to get everybody in this world. And I had that. I had a harp. I had a cloud. I knew where I was going. I was good. And my wife even would ask me, are you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm good. You know, good. But God desires more. He actually longs for a close intimate personal relationship he created Adam he uh, wanted to walk in the cool of the evening he wants that relationship and I didn't have that but I got it um, I was I, I struggled with years on what to call what happened to me and then Kara posted something where'd she go that uh <laughs> when when man does an altar call, that's evangelism, and when God does an altar call, that's revival, and that's what happened to me. I had my own personal revival. So that's a little story about that. Um, I was raised Catholic, that's kind of a theme here, but I, I'm not like most of the other people, I really, really dug into it. It was good for me. I The sacraments, the everything, I was really in, and come on in, Tara. <laughs> I'm going to call her out. <laughs> so, you know, and, and we took the kids to church. We raised them in a Christian home. I thought we did a good job. I thought we were a pretty normal family. And we had problems, but... And then Holly, she's sitting right there. That's my daughter. 
We can blame all this on her. She went to a youth group at a Pentecostal church. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, whoa. Yeah. But, you know, she was a kid and I wasn't, it didn't really affect me that much. But then Deb got interested. So it's her fault too. She wanted to go deeper. I'm like, deeper than what? You know, what's the deeper? And one night, she came home from a Wednesday night charismatic Catholic group, because you didn't do that on Sunday, but Wednesday night you could. And she was praying in tongues, and it just kind of freaked me out. I was like, oh my gosh, what is this stuff? But on the other hand, I kind of knew that it was okay. I don't know why. And then she started going to that church, that Pentecostal church. They raising their hands and all that stuff. She would go to mass with me and then go to that church. And that, what? <laughs> that church. <laughs> That's what we're going to call it, that church. Um, then uh, we started going separately. She would go to that church and I would go to my church. And one day at a friend's funeral, we were sitting through at First Church of God and I don't know, something just kind of shifted. And I'm like, you know, I could almost handle this service. She goes, well, Blue Roof has one. It's called a um, traditional service at 9 o'clock. I'm like, oh, okay, we'll give it a try. But there's no hand raising. None, no. So we went to that church for two months, and they canceled that service. Yeah. So now I'm in the traditional. I mean, I mean I'm in the dance and wave and laying hands on, praying. Oh, my word. But I was listening, I was learning, I was kind of not participating, but I was, it was good. Ah, small groups. Who thought of that one up? I'm going to go in the basement and bare my soul to a bunch of guys I don't know. Yeah, that's going to happen, you know. But I went to the parties they had, the pool parties, the Christmas parties. Great group of people. You know, the girls were upstairs, the guys were downstairs, but eh, no. But God. But God. So one day I was mowing at Henry's. It was one of the lawns I take care of. And I was just kind of thinking about, you know, I need more guy friends. I wasn't praying. I certainly, I was more of a pity party than anything. But God decided at that moment that I was vulnerable enough, and so he spoke to me. And since I'm a little stubborn, he spoke out loud. And since I was on a lawnmower, he used that ground-shaking thunder voice and said, go to group. Just three words. And I'm like, whoa. So I raced home, and I didn't tell anybody. Because who's going to believe that, you know? It's just like, ah, really? After a few days, I wasn't even sure if I believed it anymore. So on Sunday in church, I'm like, God, if that was really you, right, I'm going to need another sign. So went through the whole service, and on the way out, my group leader, the, the guy's group leader, Steve, he looked at me and said, see you tomorrow, group rich? And I'm like, yep. And Deb turned around and said, what? And Steve just grinning because I think it only took 28 times for me to say yeah. So don't give up, people. Don't push, but don't give up. It's worth it. So I went down into the basement. I buried my soul. It was good. Um, I joined an intercessory prayer group at that church. <laughs> and uh, I learned about gift of intercession, which I believe I'm very, pretty powerful in. Remember the prophetic group? They called me out on that. Um, I know. I know. You guys want to hear a cool Holy Spirit experience I had at that time? Yeah? Has anybody ever been shocked by electricity? Yeah? Oh, a lot of people. Anybody been grabbed where they can't let go? And I had it on both hands, and I couldn't let go. Anybody ever argued with God? They, oh, a lot of people there. Okay. Well, God didn't zap me with electricity, but... So we're in that church, which is now my church, and uh, 
pastor asked people to stand up that needed prayer. And our friend Christina was starting to go through a divorce, and she was really having trouble. And Deb stood up and wrapped her up and started praying. And so God tells me, lay your hands on her. And I look up, I go, nope, Deb's got her. You know, he goes, lay your hand on her. I'm like, I don't see any appropriate place where I can lay my hand on her the way my wife's got it. And then God says, she needs to feel a man's touch. I'm like, oh, my word. How can you? <laughs> I stuck my hand up underneath, and I grabbed her shoulder, and 10,000 volts of Holy Spirit convulsed in my chest and went up my arm and clamped down onto her shoulder, and it just shook me. And when I released that, I was like, now what? I just sat down. When Deb released her and she looked around, she looked at me in the eyes. We never did talk about it. I have no idea, but she, I could see a change in her after that. It's just cool things that happen. So I know you've struggled with following direction the first time, but God gives a second chance. And third. Okay, well then Blue Roof, which is now my church, has an encounter retreat every six months, and they were pushing me, and I think it's been said, I think maybe you even said it, if you push someone in when they're not ready, it's gonna be disastrous. And that's what happened. I waited until God told me I was ready, and otherwise I would have run screaming from that place. But once I decided, man, it was crazy what happened. Uh, especially on Friday, that a thunderstorm came through, knocked out power, my lawn is littered with debris, and I told her goodbye. I don't even think I had a vehicle. I was driving my dad's vehicle for some reason. I can't remember why, but everything seemed to go right, but I made it. And that night for worship, I'm looking amazing worship, amazing worship. But I had this knot in the back of my neck. And I'm like, Lord, can we start with like getting rid of that? And he said, raise your hands. We're going to go there right away. We're going to raise your hands right. I mean, it's Friday night already, okay? So, all right. That knot just tightened up into a big old mass of pain. And I'm like, Lord. And I heard God chuckle and say, all the way. It went all the way. And it was gone. The pain was gone. And... And you know, I don't lift my hands even now, but I gave up control at that point. And they just, they just go up. They just go up. And I'm sorry, sometimes they go out. <laughs> and I hope I don't knock anybody down in their chair. Somebody came out of the bathroom the other day and I whacked them with, I didn't know what was going on. I got, no, watch out for me. So, um, Saturday, I can't even begin to tell you uh, big takeaway from Saturday. I'd known my whole entire life that Jesus died on the cross for us. It was just a you know backbone of, I found out Saturday night that Jesus died on the cross for me. And that just changed the perspective of everything. Just changed it. Uh, Sunday? Can you get any better in what's going on already? Yeah, you can. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Just filled me with joy. I don't think my feet were even touching the ground. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And that, that same gal, that Christina, who she and another gal wrapped me up and started praying in tongues, and I was gone. I don't know how long I was gone, but I was just gone. It's like she gave back what I gave to her. It was just amazing. So eight years ago, that's all it's been, eight years. I read the Bible cover to cover that first year, first time I ever picked up a Bible. What was I, 52 at that point? Yeah, no, 53. So, two church plants, um, some super, super, super high points, and some amazingly down in the valley, in a trench in the valley low points. Some of you have walked me through some of that. Maybe I'll talk on that some night, too. Yeah. But is my life perfect? Oh, heck no. There's nothing perfect about it. But there's a joy yes. that 
Even when you're not happy, there's still a joy. And that's the thing. Yes. And uh, I don't know. I think that's good. The rest of those papers are just all filler, just a shift that make you guys wonder. But yeah. <laughs> but that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Uh, I don't know. In, in our heart, Deb and I, we support 13 missionaries since we started eight years ago. It's just who we, that's what we feel. And they're all people we personally know. These are not just, you know, people out there. We personally know them, and they've gone out or are going out. And, uh, oh, I got a note here. When I read through the Bible the first time, all the way through, cover to cover, every night, she just left me alone so I could read. And one night I perked up. She goes, I go, dear, they quoted the Beatles in the Bible. <laughs> and she goes, I think it's the other way around. Oh, okay. And I, <laughs> okay, really? So, um, I've gotten a King James study Bible now. That's a whole new, whole new, who, yeah? Yeah. Well, at least the study part's written in English you can read, but the rest of it, but it's pretty cool. Um, praying and laying hands, I've always felt called to do that. I've never witnessed a mirac miraculous recovery, but I've witnessed some long-term healings. Um, it's just, I just want to encourage you to just step out. Yeah. Just do it. Huh? Emily. Oh, yeah. Emily. Laura's daughter, Emily. That's her Emily. Yes. Uh, remember we? Yes. Yep. We all prayed for her. Um, it's just been, it's been an amazing journey, and I'm just thankful for all you here that have helped me on it. Um, for Shane and Kara for just being obedient in the team, all the team members, just being obedient and having a place like this that people can come share and come worship and just be free. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, just, you know, there's a joke about, you know, we don't, the, the gal in the Catholic church kept saying, praise the Lord. And finally the usher said, we don't praise the Lord in this church. We, it really was kind of oppressive once I got to, got free. Once I got free, you go back to that and think, I don't know. There's just too many rules. There aren't any rules in the barn, are there? So, good. Um, I got nothing else. You got anything else? You got anything you want me to add? Dear, you got anything you want me to add? Oh, man, okay. So, Deb had been going like this in her faith, and I'd been going like this, and then I went like that, and it kind of really made her mad that I had done that after all those years, and it made her mad that it took me 52 years to get there, <laughs> you know? But I'm sorry, you can't, I, I, that's just the way it is, you know? I'm like one of those that got to go in the, in the vineyard at the end of the day, but still get paid the same, so I'm kind of happy about that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I do know a little Bible stuff. So, <laughs> but yeah, so that was you know, there was tension the other way, and then there was tension that way. But man, what an experience! So I just encourage you. Um, PJ's been on a a type of retreat like that, and now he's going out to help people, other people go through that and just learn the the love of God. God just wants a close, personal relationship with you. That's all there is to it. And it's a lot easier than it looks. And if you think of anything I said tonight, the only thing I did was just stop and say, okay, I'm all in. Use me. And God stepped in and did the rest. I didn't do anything. So just keep that in mind. Um, hmm? I meant it. It's scary. I think I've said that like four times in my life. I'm all in, whatever, I surrender. And it's scary, but 
it's all so freeing, so freeing. If you enjoyed this message today, be sure to like and subscribe. For more messages or to get plugged in, visit FridayNightLight.us.